Brooke Shields has been married to her husband, Chris Henshee, for 20 years now. But in the past, the former model and actor had her heart broken by quite a few famous men. Before finding love with his late wife, Liam Neeson proposed to Shields twice, and then he ghosted her. Is Liam Neeson as tough as the ex? No, I'm a pussycat. Today, we're looking into the love life of the Blue Lagoon star, including how she thought she had found true love with George Michael in the 80s. It's unclear exactly how Brooke Shields and Liam Neeson met, but Hollywood is small, right? At the time, he had quite the reputation for dating the industry's best and brightest. Helen Mirren, Julia Roberts, Barbara Streisand, Sinead O'Connor, and the list continues. The former model had previously dated Dean Cain, Oh yes, the future Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman star, happened to be her Princeton boyfriend. Her relationship with Neeson began in late 1991. Although he was not the superstar he is today, his career was already making waves, and Brooke became immediately starstruck. Of course, Shields was a golden girl in her own right, and soon, the duo formed what would be a passionate flame. The actor admitted she was touched by Neeson's sweet words, poetry, and fun lifestyle. In her memoir, There Was a Little Girl, The Real Story of My Mother and Me, she wrote of this period, describing Neeson as a tall Irish actor and a drunk who was 13 years my senior. He wooed me with his brogue, his poetry, and his shitty choice of cheap Pinot Grigio wine. Oh, just look at Neeson's glasses and Shields' hair. The spirit of the early 90s was surely alive and well. Yeah, you don't mind the jeans. I feel really uncomfortable with these. I think it's all very attract most attractive. It's, it's a sad indictment of her times, I think. It is. Were, I hadn't these realized... These jeans are more expensive now than they were three years ago when I bought them. I... <laughs> when things became serious for the former Flames after three months of dating, Neeson popped the question. No ring, just so you know. Following a Christmas together in New York when they were, quote, buzzed all day long, Liam suddenly left for L.A. He had to check on his house as it allegedly suffered a basement flood. I told him to phone me when he arrived, Shields wrote, to which Neeson said, Oh, I'll be late, darling. After he left, Shields claimed she never heard from him again. Asked whether he had behaved like a character from one of his action movies, Shields agreed that it was an interesting analogy. He was there one minute and gone the next. You know, I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he was taken. Shields reportedly said of the predicament, referencing Neeson's famous action franchise. I will look for you. I will find you. Despite her previous statement, Brooke did, in fact, see her ex fling again. Shields admitted that Neeson proposed a second time in an interview with People shortly after her book's release. He came back after the first time he left me and asked me to marry him again. And I said, no, 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 because knowing you, you'll probably fall in love with your next leading lady and marry her. So I'm leaving myself out of this. And I was dead right. Anna Christie's Broadway revival opened in early 1993. Neeson's leading lady in the New York play turned out to be Natasha Richardson. The couple went on to fall in love, married the following year, and had two sons. They remained together until she tragically died in 2009. Shields insists there's no bad blood between her and the brooding Irish. The Blue Lagoon star also revealed that she saw Neeson at a bar a few years later and asked him to thank Richardson. It turns out Natasha came to see Brooks backstage when she played Sally Bowles in Cabaret, a role Richardson had played three years prior. We can only imagine what their conversation was about. In 2015, Neeson even owned up to his treatment of Shields as well. Reportedly, the actor corroborated Shields' account to watch What Happens Live's Andy Cohen. Well, mostly. I'm not going to deny it. I actually don't remember. It was many years ago, but dating, and then I flew off to LA and I didn't call her back. It sounds, yeah, Neeson said. Though he admitted they haven't kept in touch, the actor called Shields a great lady and a fantastic girl. Neeson is notoriously private about his romantic life and relationships, but he has been seen on dates. He was rumored to have been dating British businesswoman Freya St. Johnson on and off around 10 years. They were reportedly first seen together in London in 2010, but broke up two years later. However, the couple were later seen together at the Irish Film and TV Awards in 2016, and were last seen together on the red carpet in 2019. Shields famously wed tennis star Andre Agassi in 1997, but the marriage was over just two years later. She married her current husband, producer and screenwriter Chris Henchy in 2001. The couple shares daughters Ronan Greer, 
Her relationship with Neeson is not the only exciting liaison Brooke revealed in her 2014 book. Shields also disclosed how she thought she'd found true love when she dated George Michael in the 80s. Brooke admitted that out of all her famous dates, one of her biggest crushes was on the careless whisper singer. She thought he was a remarkable, respectful, and patient gentleman. Nobody had ever been willing to move so slowly. It must be love. In her jaw-dropping memoir, Shields detailed how she met Michael through her mom and how they had a few dates. Then, one night at a party for Grace Jones, he whispered to her that it was time to leave. In the limo on the way home, Michael put up the partition, separating them from their driver. Shields was on edge. I thought, oh god, I'm going to have my first time with George Michael in the back of a limo, she wrote. Well, not exactly. The singer looked deep into her eyes and told her they needed to take a break because he wanted to concentrate on his career. Shields was devastated, saying she cried herself to sleep for weeks. It was sort of ridiculous, but he was so sweet to me, she said. Plus, she added, in that era, nobody was coming out and he was a sex symbol, so I was harmless. We kind of laughed. He was funny. Oh, I didn't know. He was so, he was a singer. He was gorgeous. He was handsome. I was such a virgin. Like it didn't, I had no. Yeah. And I had none of that sort of, he just was so, and he was such a gentleman. The 2014's There Was a Little Girl also focuses on Brooke's complicated relationship with her mom, including how she affected pretty much every area of her life, not least of them dating and romance. When she was a junior at Princeton, Brooke fell in love with a future Superman. They were instantly crazy about each other. They were always holding hands and trying to find ways to be alone and kiss, she writes. But poor guy, I made him wait. Now, she says, I think it was more torturous for him because I was used to shutting that part of me off, as she was always more focused on her omnipresent mom. I felt as if she was watching. He was so, he's such a gentleman and he handled me so well. After they finally had sex, Brooke became so overwhelmed that she jumped out of their bed and laughed. Instead of giving in to what was a loving and emotionally safe relationship and escaping into the most intimate and deserved moment, I began to cry deeply and silently. I got so overwhelmed that I jumped out of my bed and bolted out of the room, Shields wrote. Sadly, it all marked the beginning of the end of her relationship with Kane. She really has nothing but the nicest things to say about him, admitting that at the time, she could not handle loving somebody more than her mom. I didn't know where I began and where my mother ended, wrote Shields of her confusion. And that meant I didn't know how to fit Dean in. She was hated, for the most part, because nobody could get near me. But she also taught me manners, taught me ethics, you know, raised me as a good Catholic girl. Hard work was always there. That's all we have for you today, juicers. As always, thanks for choosing us. Spread the word and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for more celebrity stories. And we'll be right back. Be well and be kind.